Hey guys, it's Chauncey here again today, and we're going to be talking about augmented reality content design today. The content I'm designing is the iconic augmented reality kind of dream amongst a lot of developers of basically an outdoor video game. Uh, and I had to pick my outdoor environment, and actually I'll show you that right now. So over here, outside of my office, I've got this courtyard, okay? And, you know, we've got basically just a lot of grass, some very simple things out here like light posts and trees that I have to address in my content. And what I did was, first off, I needed to really focus on scale. Okay, so I'm using Maya, and I got an aerial, aerial photo from it from just pretty much Google Earth. And this is the environment that we just looked at outside. My office is like right around this area on the built on the building. I noticed that I put the zero zero mark, which you can't really see it. But there's a grid right there in Maya, and like right in the center of it is zero 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 um, for the scale or for the actual translation of the environment. And uh, what's cool about that is then if you look right there, it's next to a tree. And if we go look back at the real environment, I've got right there a little table that's the zero 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 mark so when I go set my stuff up and test it outside I actually will set my equipment up out there on that and we will do that today probably the most important thing to remember is scale for these environments I'm using Maya and I'm going from Maya to Panda 3D and then displaying it in an augmented reality pair of glasses which you guys have seen these before these are my star 1200 Vizix displays okay so in order for the, your content to actually look and match up with the real environment, you have to make sure that the scale is consistent all the way through. Now Maya by default uses centimeters, okay, as, the, as its basic scale, but you can change that. And I changed it to feet, uh, just because that's what I'm used to working with. And in Panda, the default is feet, so you just leave, leave it the same. And then when you translate between those, the scale is always going to be the same. And then when you display it, if you, as long as you've matched to the real world, the feet, then it's going to look great. Okay, so in Maya, I've got this environment, and uh, it's just an aerial photo, and I need to block out, most video game developers would block out their environment. Now, I, I should mention, this is very early stages, this is just w the way I'm doing it now. Um, so I have my zero, zero mark right here, and zero, zero, zero mark, and I'm going to basically sit there outside, and I'm going to test this environment by looking out over the horizon to see if I can see these blocks okay so I have basically just some cubes sitting here here and here and I'm gonna test out the stereo when I see there I've got some measurements on the ground that I'm gonna kinda make sure that those are accurate um, that I measured in Google Earth these blocks will basically just be my kinda telltale sign for how contents gonna look at different varying distances so actually from let me look at a, at a top view um, so right here, you can see I got a block right there. And then, you know, I'm going to be sitting right over here. I'm going to be sitting right here and uh, looking out over the horizon at these blocks. So this is a little bit difficult to understand. I, I, for some people, I understand. It's, this is kind of like my own invention of how to build content for AR. Uh, so then there's another block and then there's another block out here okay so the this block here will probably be like a hundred yards from where I'm sitting uh, in the spatial environment as a virtual object okay so this the first experiment that we're doing here is really just for me to see how does this content look outside uh, does the stereo actually work for these varying distances so remember like from here to here that's like a hundred yards from where I'm where I'm going to be sitting Another thing I should mention is today is like a really nice day. It's sunny outside. It's it's right around like 60 degrees, um, and that's just like a perfect working environment. But we're heading into winter, and this is Indiana, and it's going to be snowing and nasty out. So I've got to be able to prototype my stuff outside or for the outdoors, um, where the, I have minimal time that I spend outdoors testing, but I at least can get a good idea about what it looks like in the real life. So for that, I'm using my school's uh, virtual reality theater. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, as I said, uh, when it's nasty outside, like the weather's raining or it's very cold or snowing outside, uh, I need a way to test my environment, in a, my, test my augmented reality content in a way that feels like it's 
uh, one to one scale, you know, it actually is physical size in the physical environment. And uh, the only way I can really do that is either go outside or use a virtual reality facility. And that's what we have here. This is a virtual reality theater and I'm running, I actually enabled Panda for this theater. What I can do then is see, you know, what this looks like if I was walking on the ground, but I'm, I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see the uh, full environment. So you notice it's, this is that Google Earth map I was talking about. And uh, the cool thing about it is, is this is physical size. So let me go stand up in here. So you can see the screens are large enough for me to actually use this in a way that feels more natural uh, to the real environment. Now obviously we wouldn't be up, up in the air like this in the, in the real world for, um, unless you were doing some sort of like helicopter, you know what I mean, to like actually get up in the air. Uh, let me go back to like the original view. Okay, you might remember as I said that I will be sitting on the ground looking out over this field and I'll see these blocks floating. So here I am outside now testing with the actual goggles outside. Right now it's a blue sky and it's really sunny out here. So you really honestly can't see anything through the goggles. Um, another thing I've observed by testing outdoors with the uh, Star 1200s is the orientation tracking really isn't isn't the best tracking mechanism in the world. Um, I'm starting now to consider visual tracking with like some sort of large billboard marker or something like that. Um, the way I test out here is I basically took, like I said, I showed you that Google Earth overlay and then I modeled over the environment uh, these cubes, okay? So then with the cubes, you can actually take and look through these and see these cubes like floating in the air. Um, unfortunately, it's still bright out right now. You can't really see anything at all. <clears throat> with polarized lenses though, you can actually help the uh, transparency on these goggles. And uh, I, I'm wearing some polarized sunglasses right now and they seem to be doing okay. Um, I'm really disappointed though, My um, the orientation tracking from the inertial sensors in here just isn't good enough to lock the content in place. I mean, I can see the content in stereo uh, floating over the environment, but what's happening is I move my head, and you know, things should move with my head, like exactly locked on, and what's happening is I'm moving my head, and it's like slowly trailing behind, and I move my head and it comes slowly trailing back, and uh, the performance of the... Uh, just the accuracy of the tracking is just not that great. So I'm gonna have to pursue other tracking mechanisms. Um, for now, I'm gonna really focus on um, just getting uh, maybe the artwork working on here because that's more of my focus. I've spent way too much time doing tracking.